I'd love to talk about, um, as, as we kind of wrap up, uh, Clay, a few years ago you wrote a book called How to Measure Your Life. Uh, personally, it's had a huge impact on my life, where it basically outlines uh, the, uh, this theory and these uh, tactics behind uh, not getting divorced, not, uh, your kids not hating you, and not going to jail, um, which, which is something I'm often wonder, th worried, worried about and concerned about. So, uh, where did you come up with this, and, and you know, why did you put this out? Well, going back to something Mark said, what causes disruption to occur is not incompetence. It is you do everything right, and because you do everything right, you get killed. And nobody intended to get killed, but because they did what they thought were the right thing, it killed them. And I look at my students who graduate every year, not a single one of them has a strategy to go out and get divorced <laughs> right. or to raise kids that hate their guts. You know. And yet, a shocking number of our graduating students actually implement that strategy that they did not intend to pursue. <laughs> and, and so what is it that causes them to do what they would not want to happen? You know? And it turns out that it's the very same causal mechanism. And that is, I invest in things that pay off fast. So if you are the kind of person who has a high need for achievement, and that includes at least 100% of us, right? If that's, if, if that's what we need to do in our lives, then when we have an extra 30 minutes of time or ounce of energy, in our mind, subconsciously, we will try to find what could I do with this time and energy that would pr promote the most immediate and tangible evidence that I've achieved something. And our careers provide tangible and immediate evidence of achievement every day. We close a deal, we ship a product, we get promoted, we get paid, uh, and our, our careers are just filled with tangible, immediate evidence of achievement. On the other hand, when we go home, it's very hard to see achievement, frankly. Our children misbehave every day. You know, they, the house gets messy every day. And so when we have a choice about how do we spend this extra ounce of time and energy, unconsciously, we invest our time and energy where we get the immediate return, and that's not at home. And we don't intend to invest in things that, because money doesn't bring happiness. It's just we know that, right? And yet we do it, but it's because the way we allocate our time and energy, driven by this achievement. So um, just understand for me, understanding that that's what happens, then I might be able to deal with it in a more productive way, you know. So I'll just give you one example, and, and, but that's really what motivated my writing the book. So when I got my MBA, I got a job with the Boston Consulting Group. And uh, after I'd been there about a month, the project manager came to me and said, Clay, we need to meet on Sunday at 2 p.m. because we have a big client presentation on Monday. We've got to be sure every, everything is in place. And I said, oh, gosh, Mike, I forgot to tell you. I'm a religious guy, and I just made a commitment that I wouldn't work on Sunday. And uh, he just went bonkers. And he, everybody here works on Sunday. And I said, well, I made a commitment that I wouldn't. And uh, he said, look, I don't know anything about your church, but my church, if I need to do something that's a little bit shady, uh, <laughs> I just do it. And then I find a priest, and I confess that I did it. <laughs> and I promise never to it again, you know. And, uh, and he said, doesn't your church have some kind of escape gal, whatever? <laughs> And I said, I've been looking for that out for a long time, and I don't think they have Those it. Those Harvard trapdoors. That, that's right. 
And so I said, I just, I, I can't do it, I'm sorry. And he said, anyway, so he blustered away. And an hour later he came back and he said, look, Clay, I talked to everybody, it's fine, we'll meet on Saturday at 2 p.m. And I said, oh man, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I made a commitment to my wife that I, I wouldn't work on. Uh, I wouldn't work on Saturday, and uh, Mark was just even more bonkers about it. <laughs> and he said, "Look, Clay, whatever commitments you made to your wife on Sat about Saturday, just this once in this particular extenuating circumstance, isn't going to be okay to do it just this once." And I said, "Mike." I am not on this earth to make the partners at BCG to become richer. You know, I really want to be a good husband and a good father. And if I spend my Saturdays here at BCG, I will be implementing a strategy that I don't intend to pursue. And he was really mad at that. <laughs> and so then he came back an hour later and he said, look, I talked to the team. Do you happen to work on Friday, perchance? <laughs> but, you know, it, it turns out that that decision is one of the most important decisions I ever made because it turns out that my whole life has been filled with an unending stream of extenuating circumstances. <laughs> And if I had said just this once, the next time it occurred and the next time, it was easier and easier. And I decided that it is easier to hold to our principles 100% of the time than it is 98% of the time. And, and we, you know. So anyway, that's why I wrote the book. Mark, anything you want to add to that? I think I'm going to stop working on weekends. <laughs> Mark and Clay, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, everybody.